Okay, this is the uh, Shield 2017 model. I got this uh, second hand and uh, it didn't have the ordinary Shield software on it. So it's been a while, I've been trying to get uh, the stock uh, Shield software on there and uh, I finally managed to do it uh, last night with my Mac. So it's now running the latest software, uh, but I'm gonna reinstall it just to do a video and show how how I got to it and also all the problems I had. So because I had this without uh, without a controller, I couldn't get this into fast boot mode, uh, which is which is important for reinstalling the stock software. Um, I tried many keyboards. I tried about six or seven different keyboards, um, some wireless ones, some ordinary wired ones, some cheap ones, some expensive ones. None of them were using the uh, method of plugging in and pressing and hold A and B. Uh, none of them would boot into fast boot. So, uh, and also if I managed to get this to boot into fast boot using a computer, uh, the keyboard still didn't control anything that was on the screen. Interestingly, I could control what was in recovery, but not in fast boot. Anyway, so what I ended up doing is getting a uh, Nvidia Shield controller. Now this is a 2017 model. You can tell by the sockets. There's no uh, micro USB socket on it. Um, and uh, this is a 2015 controller. The only reason I bought a 2015 controller is uh, I didn't really need an extra controller because I can use an Xbox One and also I've got some Android Bluetooth controllers I can use. But this enabled me to use Fastboot and it works every time. So plug it in, press and hold A and B together uh, and within about five seconds you're in the fast boot menu which is really important for installing the stock Android version on there. So the controller is great as well, it, it works with the voice control, uh, the headphones I was using last night that works perfectly well as well so uh, no problems in using a 2015 model with a 2017 machine because obviously it's a lot cheaper. I'd say £22 I think I paid on CEX uh, and it's, it's in immaculate condition, it's great. So the other issue I had, uh, apart from the keyboard issue, was uh, data cables. Now, uh, the way that you connect this 2017 model to a computer is by USB-A to USB-A. And this is a, for me, this is a bit of an unusual cable. Apparently, that is used a lot in uh, uh, music equipment. Uh, but I'd never actually uh, ended up owning an A to A cable. Uh, but by chance, I'd, I'd forgotten uh, that one came with this, which is a, a dynamo enclosure, uh, so it's a, a hard disk enclosure, and it actually came with this very cable. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description for this because it's very easy to obtain, and it was only it's only about ten pound, uh, and the enclosure is very useful anyway because you can use it for uh, popping an SSD or an ordinary hard disk in there and adding extra space to this or your smart TV or your computer or whatever. So let's get rid of that. So this cable, uh, this USB three. Uh, data cable and that's really important if you're getting problems uh, a lot of the time it's going to be the cable uh, is not going to be suitable for for doing this uh, this update with the stock software um, now if uh, also if you're not being able to run the Android operating system on your shield but it is the the fast boot loader is still intact what you can do is plug in the uh, with a micro USB cable uh, and even before the shield controller is set up, uh, you can use the fast boot method. So plugging in uh, the power adapter and pressing and holding A and B together will put you into fast boot. But when you're doing this, you're meant to be connected. The other end of this is meant to be connected to a computer and the HDMI is connected into a monitor. So let's move over to my TV so I can show you a bit better how to do all that. Okay, so the first link is on the XDA developer site. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description. It will take you to this page uh, and I found the instructions really good on here uh, and all the download links were working and everything as well. Um, so this tells you how to install it to either Windows or Mac or even Linux. Uh, I've tried it on, well Mac is what I got to use last night but I'm going to do it on Windows for the purpose of this because I'm figuring that most people are going to use uh, a Windows computer for this cause but I might put some of the differences for the Mac at the end of this video. Okay so when you've done that if you go into File Explorer uh, and look for your C drive under this PC, there you go. So if we go into Windows C, you'll see that you'll have a folder that's called ADB. Uh, and if you open that up, you'll see that there's an ADB and a Fastboot program in there. These are the key programs that are going to allow you to 
uh, write information over to your shield. So the next step would be to go to the NVIDIA site uh, and download the image. Uh, and so you can see here, I'll put a link in the description to this as well, uh, Shield Developer OS Images. Now, I used a particular one because the original one I tried, which was uh, version 7, didn't work. So I ended up using the one that I'm going to use for this video because hopefully it will work exactly the same with the Windows computer uh, and install. Um, but it's uh, So I've got a Shield 2017 model. Obviously change this if you've got a different version of a Shield. And the instructions are slightly different as well when you do the README. Uh, but this is the 2017 model. So I'll click on there and you can hear, uh, you can see here the uh, download center. Now the one I had uh, I think is 6.1.0 just double check that. I've got it on my USB drive. Yeah, 6.1. So you can see there, uh, NVIDIA Recovery Image Shield uh, ATV 2017 6.1.0. So that's the one I downloaded. Now if I click on that, you'll see what happens. So I'm on Windows. I use the Windows one for the Mac as well. Uh, accept the uh, terms and conditions. And then it'll ask you to log in. Uh, because this is a developer site, you do need to log in, but I just use Facebook. So all I did uh, was uh, hit, I think I hit join, and then maybe hit login. Let's try login. Right, so login gives you that page. If you go back and go to join, you can choose to join with a Facebook account. So I just logged in with a Facebook account and then that allowed me to download it. So you click on login with Facebook or login with Google and it doesn't seem to ask you any extra questions uh, and it just lets you download that file. So I've already downloaded that file. So let's go back to my uh, USB stick, which is here. So that's that image. Let's pop that over the side. Uh, and then I'll try and open up, uh, what do we do, open a new window. Let's put these side by side so you can see. Uh, so we go to the C drive uh, and we go to ADB. And what we want to do is put all the files from here, uh, which is the downloaded zip file. So it's the whole operating system of the, of the NVIDIA Shield. And we want to put it in to this ADB folder. So let's double tap. Double tap again, you can see all the files. Let's just drag up over all of them and drag them into here. And this will take a while because it's a zip file. So while it's doing this, you can see on the left hand side, these are all the files that are going to be required to do this job. So the ADB and the Fastboot are the programs that control the NVIDIA Shield, but also a lot of these other bits uh, to do with blob and uh, boot flash, recovery, all of those are the bits that need to be written over to the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, and I managed to get rid of, I did have a um, Android 6, but it was uh, like a phone operating system on there. Um, and, uh, and it didn't have any Google Play services, wouldn't update or anything like that. So that's the whole reason I ended up doing all of this. Right, that's all done. So the USB stick I can unplug now, because that's out of the equation. I should have all the necessary files I need on here. Now let's, uh, down on the search bar, type in CMD for command prompt and let that come up. So you can see that's come up. Now what we need to do is plug everything in. So I'm going to plug the USB cable from the shield, what's the best way of doing this, uh, into the USB on the laptop. This isn't powered up yet, so I've got the USB cable can you see that? So I've got the USB cable now plugged in from the shield in the furthest away USB socket from the HDMI. The HDMI is here, so it's the one on this side. Plug that into the laptop. Uh, I've got the controller plugged in so I can use ADB boot, although I'm not sure if I need to do that. I'm going to see if I can do it from the computer anyway. And let's plug in. Now, usually the TV needs to be on for this. Let's switch the TV on, pop in the HDMI cable, and you heard Windows then, uh, that was it recognising the USB device. If you don't get that prompt when the uh, NVIDIA Shield starts up, if it doesn't um, recognise the device, you're going to have some troubles, um, and it often is 
In my case, it was often down to the USB cable, um, but uh, as you heard, mine, mine has recognized it uh, and it shows the drivers and everything. So now what we can do is uh, type in ADB uh, devices. Okay, so you can, you can see it came up with uh, device oh, McDonald's. Uh, you can see it came up with um, device not recognised. Now I I've not had that with this. Let's just unplug it and plug it in again. Maybe it was because it was booting up. Because I have had this recognised, uh, but not since I haven't plugged this in since I've installed the new Shield software, which you can just about see in the background there. Yeah, device not recognised. So. Port reset failed. Now this could be the mode that the uh, the USB mode that the shield is in. What I'm going to do is unplug it and and start it with fast boot and see if that makes the difference. So I'm plugging in, I'm pressing and holding A and B together. There you go, and it's booted into into fast boot, which you can see if I move this. Whoop. There you go. You can see that menu's come up on the Nvidia Shield. So let's go back over to here and let's see if that, yeah, I think that USB device has been recognized this time. And let's try fast boot devices. Now it's still not finding any devices. So I haven't tried to connect a computer to this since I've uh, successfully updated it. So let's just go into uh, settings and uh, see that uh, USB debugging is enabled. Okay, so what I need to do is go into settings, uh, go down to about, go down to uh, what is it, build, and keep tapping A, and you see three steps, two steps, one step from being developer. I'm now a developer. So if we go back we get developer options and I need to, so enable developer options is on. Ah, here we go, USB debugging. So switch that on and now it's probably gonna work. I, see, I didn't have any of this before because the old operating system was, was very, very different. So this will help you if you've got um, one of the newer systems and you wanted to change the software. So hopefully that's enough and that's all I need to do. So let's go back to the computer. I think what I'm going to do is uh, unplug the USB and plug it in again and see if the device is recognized. So it's now come up on the display. Allow USB debugging, nice angle. So I'm going to say OK, obviously. Always allow from this computer I'm going to go for as well. So now we'll try uh, ADB devices yeah so you can see now that the number has come up so the device is there so now what we can do let's try and uh, boot into fast boot without using the controller let's do it all from the computer here uh, so if I do ADB reboot boot loader yeah you can see my TV screen went off and I like these angles. Hopefully, we should start up. There you go. So that's what you should have. Now, from this menu, uh, you want to use your controller. Psychedelic filming. Uh, you want to use your controller, and you want to go down to unlock bootloader. Uh, using X and Y to move around, unlock bootloader. Loader. Press A. So mine's already unlocked, so if yours isn't, then it will, it will come up and it'll unlock it. So that's fine. If you're doing this on a Mac, uh, you need to, before any of these commands, you need to put dot forward slash and then say ADB uh, reboot. As I say, only for a Mac. And, and you would do everything the same, but you would do dot forward slash. Uh, and you, you go into it a bit differently. This uh, a Windows computer just kind of detects where it is because it's in the root of C, the folder, the ADB folder I showed you earlier on. On a Mac, 
you have to tell it where the folder is, but I'll probably cover that later. So let's do that. Right, so it hasn't found the device. So what I think I'm going to do is just unplug it and plug it in again, the NVIDIA Shield. So let's plug that in and we'll let that reboot. And I'll get my notes. I was working from my iPad before, but I thought for this purpose it's probably easier to, to have it all printed out. So while it's rebooting and it says there's some sort of issue, uh, we will go back to my folder and just to show, just to reiterate that if I go to this PC uh, and I go to the C drive, we have an ADB folder in C uh, and it's got all of the Android recovery files there. As I say, I haven't had this working yet with the Windows computer. I did it last night with the Mac and it worked, although there was one time when it timed out and I had to go back in again. But it seems to be that if one of the stages doesn't work, you can carry on from where you got to. So all is not lost if it stops working. So USB debugging connected. Obviously you need to turn that off if you want to use your USB socket normally on your shield. Uh, so let's go back into here and let's start. Um, so the instructions are different for the 2017 and the 2015 model. So make sure that you're using the right ones. And for the 2017 model, they're the ones that are right at the bottom of the page. Uh, and so... Let's uh, let's go ADB reboot boot loader. You can see that in the background it's gone off. It's difficult to try and show you both, but I want to be able to zoom in on because I've looked at other um, videos and I couldn't really see what was being typed. And I like to be able to see step by step what everybody else is doing to to know that mine is doing the same thing. Uh, so now we've got to go fast boot flash staging blob. I don't know what any of this is, so if you've got any questions, I certainly am not um, I'm not not someone who knows about these devices. So it says waiting for device, so it's not so currently it's not working, so I might end up doing the rest of this on my Mac. Now I don't know why this isn't working with my Windows device uh, because I'm using the same cable in the same configuration but it's still not working. I'm just going to go back into the menu and I'm going to see what happens with my Mac. So let's switch these computers around because my Mac is underneath and I've just pulled my shield off the shelf. Luckily, the loads of cables inside it held it. Right, so here's my Mac. Uh, and all this process is the same, um, apart from the start bit on the Mac. Uh, and let's just see what happens here. So we're plugged in via USB. We're on the bootloader. Um, so on a Mac, you've got to go into Terminal. And then what we need to do is, uh, let's get that a bit bigger. Oh, that doesn't really help, does it? Uh, go, press CD and space. And all my stuff is in this platform tools folder, you can see here. All the same files and folders, pretty much as, as the Windows computer. Uh, I drag that folder over to the terminal and you can see that it's got my details in there. Press return. Press return, uh, and then what we need to do is follow uh, these instructions again. So I'm just going to try uh, fast boot devices to see. Oh, right. So this is what I was saying before. Full stop, forward slash, fast boot devices. So you only need to do the full stop and the forward slash if you're using it on a Mac. So you can see. There you go. So it's found the device, so you can see that the numbers come up. So whatever wasn't working on the Windows computer, for whatever reason, something to do with my configuration, uh, is working on my Mac. So I'm going to continue the rest of this on the Mac because the principle is the same. Uh, the shield is in the same mode, but for some reason it's working on my Mac, uh, which it did yesterday. So fast boot. Uh, I still have to do. That's the only thing. Full stop, forward slash, fast boot flash staging 
blob. There you go, so you can see it's sending stuff over to my shield. So now we need to do fast boot, flash, boot, boot, dot img. So this bit's working as well now, so that's the second bit. So now fast boot flash recovery recovery <laughs> dot image nice reading uh, yes yeah, so it's doing the recovery bit as well so it seems to be working now this is what it did last night but at one point it stopped uh, working through the system so dot forward slash fast boot flash uh, sys, this is the one that takes a bit longer STEM dot IMG and it's gone really dark here it's really really rainy and so it's hard to see right so that bit's working as well so this is the um, system part so I need to do vendor next and at the end of it it says fast boot reboot well mine didn't work on the fast boot reboot oh by the way while it's doing this on the screen you can see it says please wait So it shows that the uh, shield knows that something is happening. Still don't know why it's not working on the Windows computer, but all the principles are the same. So the fact that I couldn't get keyboards to work, the fact that it definitely works with a controller um, to be able to get into Fastboot, um, and also where you need to put the downloaded uh, image, uh, which is the bit from NVIDIA, which is all the software, which is what it's loading now. Um, so all of those bits are the same. Uh, as I say, the, I keep pointing out, I'm putting dot forward slash, but that's because I'm doing this on a Mac. Uh, and also that bit where I do CD and then drag a folder in, that's only something you have to do on terminal. You don't have to do that on the command prompt on a Windows computer. What are we at now? 24 of 32. Um, I don't know if it timed out when I did it before because I was away from the computer when it was doing this bit. And maybe if you don't do anything for a little bit, it stops working. So what I'll try and do is keep an eye on this. And when it gets to... 32 of 32 and says that it's finished doing the uh, system bit, then uh, I'll, I'll let it do the last bit, which is vendor. I'm going to possibly do some more NVIDIA Shield videos. Um, I want to put uh, Rycast on here, the Dreamcast emulator, because I've got uh, Dave Mirror, which is a great BMX game, which I want to play on this platform. I was playing uh, GTA Liberty Stories last night. I was trying out all the... Um, uh, the various uh, GeForce Go systems, which is really good. So that says it's finished, right? So let's uh, full start forward slash fast boot flash vendor space vendor vendor dot image. I think that's right. And if it does this bit, it would have done all the, the flashing. Yeah, a bit of a delay there. Now, I think I had this yesterday where it did it on this bit. So I've definitely typed that in right. Vendor, vendor, dot image. So I probably need to restart in fast boot mode. Yeah, because it's... Right, so when it gets to this point, I think it's definitely not working. See, if I unplug that it fails to write and I definitely had this yesterday so what I'll do is unplug the shield plug it in, in again press and hold A and B um, and then it will, yeah so now we're back in the bootloader so now let's try uh, no, uh, yeah, it looks like it's in the right yeah it's in the right folder anyway uh, fast boot flash vendor vendor dot image yeah so it weirdly it seems to time out um, but if it does time out hope fingers crossed uh, it seems to work because as I say it did this for me yesterday I couldn't complete the whole thing and when I get to the end bit, this is nice and dark, where it goes fast boot, reboot, um, 
I couldn't get it to do that from the computer. It's almost like when it had written all this information, uh, it, it had timed out. And as you could see from that, I waited for it to stop and I went into it straight away and it still timed out. So seven and nine, eight of nine, that's a little Star Wars reference. Star Trek, <laughs> nice. Uh, so fast boot. So the last thing I need to do is fast boot reboot. So full stop, forward slash, fast boot reboot. Rebooting. But it doesn't look like it is. See, this is this is the weird bit that, and and bearing in mind it's done all the copying, so I'm guessing it doesn't need any of that. Uh, so what I'll do is do this next bit because it says restarting, but it won't be restarting. Uh, do this next bit. I can't believe how much darker it's got in here, but at least you can see the screen well. Uh, by oh yeah, this is still working that. So if I, actually if I do, cont no let's do reboot because that would be rebooting fast boot uh, or rebooting the system and see what it comes up with. Pretty sure it did this yesterday. Okay, so you can see from this that it looks like it's worked. Uh, I. In the end, I had to reinstall uh, the very latest version on the site, uh, and I think it's probably because the NVIDIA Shield doesn't like going backwards. Um, so if you've had a newer version on there, it doesn't seem to want to let you install the older version. I don't know if that's true or not, but I tried it twice uh, using exactly the same method, didn't work. Uh, used this method uh, the third time using uh, the Mac, everything exactly the same, but the difference was that I was installing the very latest version, uh, and as you can see, it's, uh, it seems to be working fine. The only thing I had to do right at the end was to uh, lock the bootloader, uh, which is, so you would go in, you would start the system up, uh, press and hold A and B, um, and when it's starting up it will go into the bootloader and then is there, there is an option there to lock the bootloader and it seems to want to do that to work normally. Okay, so I plan to do some more Nvidia Shield videos in the future. Uh, not sure what direction to take on that but uh, I'll probably do some with uh, running some emulators and installing some emulators and I'd really like to get Now TV working uh, on the Nvidia Shield to try that out. Okay, so I've got my trusty LG G3 to help me through the rest of the setup. So I'll just pair my device, <clears throat> so even though this is the 2015 uh, pad, I'll just show that it works. It actually detects which one I'm using, which is quite cool. So now we're up and running on the controller, uh, all the controls back button volume control, all of that works. Uh, you can see it's just updating some apps. If I go into settings and about, you can see that it's running Android version 8. Search YouTube for Lee PSP video. And there I am. Okay, so all that's working. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.